Hey, Mushroom Nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I want to talk to you about one of the smallest members of the Cantharellus genus. So this is a cinnabar red chanterelle. It's an edible mushroom. Some people call it the red chanterelle. Some people call it the cinnabar red chanterelle. The scientific name for it is Cantharellus cinnabarinus. So cinnabar is all over like the common and the scientific name of this little mushroom. And that is in reference uh, to the color. And so cinnabar is like a mineral, but I, when I'm describing this, I usually call it vermilion or poppy, sort of this very flamboyant, uh, orangey, you know, tones of red, tones of yellow, but uh, very, very festive, I suppose. Compared to other uh, chanterelle mushrooms, you can see they're very, very dainty, but they do have all of the same identification characteristics for the most part for all chanterelles, at least the critical ones. So first of all, you have uh, what are called false gills. So these are not uh, like this is where the uh, mushrooms form their spores and this is fertile material, but uh, they aren't true deep blade like gills. And so a lot of times if you find little diminutive mushrooms like this and they're very, very, uh, you know, brightly colored. If you flip them over, most of them are going to have like, uh, you know, little slices underneath as opposed to these uh, sort of forked and ridged um, and also decurrent, meaning running, running down the stem, little false gills. Um, and if you're, you know, familiar with larger uh, culinary chanterelles or you're going on the internet and looking at um, culinary mushroom brag posts, you'll also see this is one of the primary features people highlight when they are learning how to identify chanterelles is this false gill sort of, uh, you know, forking and ridged and wrinkled situation distinguishes chanterelles from a lot of other mushrooms, which is one of the reasons, even though there are many of them and some of them are super cryptic and hard to ID to species, they're also uh, the very, very easy to identify uh, collectively if you're interested in getting started foraging. So um, these fellas, I typically don't bring home with me to eat because uh, they're so tiny and you have to collect, you know, Know, a tremendous number of them. They do grow in colonies that sometimes get fairly large, but typically I see like five or six individuals. And their favorite place to grow, in my experiences, uh, along creek sides in mossy banks. And so these mushrooms really stand out if you're walking along because, as you can tell, they have a very, very bright uh, color. Another feature that you'll see as they mature is they sort of like they're a little bit rounded or scallop shaped and they get a little divot in the middle. And so she Chanterelles, again, like, uh, you know, they share this sort of upward um, growth pattern. But in the case of something that, uh, you know, is much, much smaller, the cinnabar red chanterelle is a much smaller divot, if you will. So uh, besides that, you have a very uh, thin stem. And it is different from other chanterelles in that when you open it up, it is not like thick and white. Particularly, it's more um, sort of carroty colored or a, you know, slightly discolored version of what you have on the outer surface. And that is because the mushroom actually, I mean, it's just so small. You don't have this really clear demarcation between the surface of um, the stem and the interior of it. And I highlight that because, um, you know, a lot of chanterelle mushrooms, one of the ways that you can determine their edibility um, is, oh, this one's full of bugs, but like the uh, interior, ooh, that's gross. Jeez, let's try something else here. Oh, okay, that's all, all right, almost presentable. So this is a, uh, uh, it's, oh gosh, it's sort of a peachy version of the velvety chanterelle, Cantharellus velutinus. Anyway, it's sort of a peachy color, but on the inside, it's sort of white uh, all the way through. But with your cinnabars, there just really isn't enough there there. So um, that's a, you know, one thing to bear in mind, I suppose, that makes them different from their kin in the Cantharellus genus. But again, the reason that I love this little mushroom is because it grows on these mossy creek banks and because they have these beautiful little false gills. And so the color is remarkable, but the gills having, uh, you know, this, these fertile structures being slightly uh, lighter in color and sort of almost an off creamy situation, as you can see, really makes them um, almost luminous when uh, they're on a green creek bed. So uh, I hope you find plenty of them. If you're inclined to eat them, like, <laughs> hooray for you. I, uh, I have. I don't have any recommendations one way or the other. It's really a matter of how much work you want to do and how many you find. 
And on that note, I hope you find a bunch. We'll talk again soon.